moving on to our next uh, session. Well, uh, we'd like to thank our panelists who joined us before because it was a session that had, I think, key takeaways for all of you. The next session is, um, I think all of us are personally and when we talk also in, in, in a group, we are always intrigued about the power of artificial intelligence and machine learning. And before we think of harnessing these new technologies, let's have an expert help us understand the scope of AI and ML in distribution and asset management business. How is that going to work? We have with us Mr. Mridul Mishra. He's the senior director of Fidelity. He's an avid reader with keen interest in finance, psychology, history. He's very curious and passionate about the role of technology in human life. There is one problem that he could solve that will be differentiating impact of skills and luck in an outcome. Would you please join me in welcoming Mr. Mishra up on stage? Thank you very much. This was the friendliest robot picture I could get on the internet. Uh, my name is Mridul Mishra. I represent a company called Fidelity Investment. A lot of you would have heard about it. So I will just give you a little bit of context about Fidelity, which is relevant for today's conversation. Uh, the group I work for is US-based. There is a rest of the US-based, but the company I work for is uh, the FMR side of it. It's fairly large. When I say fairly large, as the year end last year, it was $4.5 trillion assets under management. Around 70,000 people, uh, we are fairly large retirement service providers. So one in four working adult in US is a customer. US doesn't have that much population, so it's still, I think, around 40, 45 million adults. Uh, we invest a lot in technology, so just from a context perspective, we have been doing a lot of uh, AI, ML-related stuff. We have around 300 globally data scientists and a few hundred statisticians, uh, all those PhDs in astrophysics type of people. What I will, wanted to talk today was first five, six minutes, just level set it, what do we mean by these terms, because uh, even internally, there's a lot of confusion. What is AI? Actually, the last panel was great because it was mentioned so many times, uh, artificial intelligence. What we've started calling it is more augmented intelligence than artificial because, honestly, whatever you read in public media, I don't think machines can replace us. So what we will do is talk about six, seven minutes about what we mean and then remaining 13 minutes about potential use cases and where I think there is value based on the experience in the industry. Uh, so what we will talk about really is what is artificial intelligence. And maybe some of you know, uh, the term was coined in 1950s, so it's not something which happened now. This was done by a gentleman called John McCarthy, and he really says science and engineering of making intelligent machines. Now what is intelligence? That itself is a fairly debatable topic. Those of who, who have Roomba cleaning your floors at home, or Alexa, or Google Home, or uh, Google Maps, do you use? Uh, is that really intelligence? Uh, like most Indians, if, when I went to dictionary to find out what intelligence is, it really says it is about learning and understanding, and then applying that in new context. Now, what is learning and what is understanding for machines? These itself are philosophical questions, which I'm not going to get into. But for today's conversation, let's go with this definition that we want to make intelligent machines, and we believe that human intelligence is the pinnacle of it. And then let's talk about what is machine in learning. So that's my teenager daughter, and those of you who have uh, teenagers possibly will relate with it. When they are adolescent, little younger, it's a lot easier to give them instructions. It's quite okay to tell them, go to bed at 9 o'clock, your, clean your dish before you put it into dishwasher. Once they start growing up and become teenagers, they start becoming little rebellious, and you need a different way of dealing with it. Those of you who have small kids, this will be helpful for you. The way it works really is that you start teaching them by examples. So you don't check your phone on the dinner table. Hopefully that's the right example you want to set. Uh, you clean your plate before you put it into the dishwasher and not leave in the sink. And what you hope is by those examples, they pick it up 
their algorithm, what God has created, will learn from that, and they will start using that. So in a lot of ways, machine learning is also like that. So it's more like the teenagers, the way you need to deal with them. The before AIML, which was putting instructions or putting recipes, was like how you deal with the adolescents, actually. So I'll give you a more formal definition, uh, which you'll find if you go to Wikipedia or something like that, which is algorithmically learning patterns in data and using these patterns to predict. Now, the point to note here is uh, it assumes that there are patterns in data. If data does not have pattern, it doesn't work. The only thing which it is trying to do is find those patterns which may be available in the data. And that data could be about anything. Uh, and we will talk about some of those use cases. But more or less, that's it. There is no magic into it. It is just a computer program which can look at large amount of data and find the patterns into it. Uh, before, I get into, uh, before I get into detail, I just wanted to put the big picture about where does AI machine learning fits into it. So, uh, AI has been there for like 75 years now, 1950s uh, when this project was launched. And uh, for the first 40 years, we used to build what we used to call expert systems, where users used to say how it should work, and we used to try to code it, and those used to be the way expert systems used to be built. Now, there are some problems which you can't really code. Like if somebody asks you to define uh, how do you recognize your spouse, and you have to tell it in uh, terms, it's very difficult. You somehow know. Uh, even if she calls you up right here, just by the tone of her voice, you will figure out if she's angry or not. Now, you can't tell that in rules. Now, those are the areas where expert systems just cannot work, and most of the real-world problems are like that. And that's where the machine learning started playing the role, where you don't have to define that, you don't have to say it, it will pick it up from data. And what has happened in last uh, almost uh, 10 years, 2012 onwards, this whole neural networks, or what they call deep learning now, which is inspired by how human brain learns the neurons and different layers, have started taking it over. So the key takeaway which I wanted you to take is that artificial intelligence, machine learning are not the same thing. Machine learning is one of the ways of getting artificial intelligence. You can get it other ways. And RPA is not artificial intelligence. RPA is repeating the same task. So for anything about AI, it's about learning and applying it in different contexts. If it can't learn, it's not really intelligent. I'll just give you one more context before we talk about the use case. Actually, most of the development in AI has been through uh, what now gets called as Mana Companies. It used to be FANGS before the name got changed. And these companies have uh, three things going for them. One of them, they have large customers, uh, billions of people using them, millions of interaction, people coming and sharing data on themselves with them. The second thing is they have one large problem to solve. They are building recommendation systems to tell you which thing to buy, which uh, movie to watch next. And th because of that, they can put lots of smart data scientists and engineers behind it. And the third thing is the problem they are solving is if they go wrong, it's not prohibitively costly, which means if one of the recommendations you see on your Netflix doesn't make sense, you will ignore it. it it's not going to be uh, that difficult. But why I wanted to tell you this is those are the three key criteria based on which the evolution in AI has happened, and it has primarily done by these big tech companies, as we call. Now, the same recipe doesn't work in the mutual fund industry as what we have seen. So let's talk about the use cases uh, of what I have seen. This is the only text-heavy slide I ended up having because uh, I just wanted to give a picture that, at least based on what I have seen, there are plenty of use cases across the whole life cycle where AI has delivered value based on first-hand experience or the peers what you have looked at. And personalization was one of the areas which was talked a lot. Uh, so far, most of the uh, marketing sales used to happen based on market segmentation. But what we are able to do now with, the, uh, with personalization in marketing is not only say that maybe this person is better to connect on WhatsApp rather than mail. But actually tell at what time will that be right? What is the best 
tone of language to use to have a communication with him. So that level of personalization has created a lot of value. And for something like that, you need some kind of artificial intelligence-based solution. Actually, India is quite ahead in terms of the onboarding use cases of it. US has a different problem because every state has their own ID cards and different laws. But the other case, which uh, a lot of Indian companies have been able to do it, use computer vision to process the identification document and get the kind of frictionless onboarding within minutes, uh, get it done. The use case which I wanted to talk about in manufacturing out of many which are possible there is around the trade execution side of it. So we are a fairly large company, uh, have billions of dollars of trade going out every day, which generates lots of data. And that becomes a lot of use case to identify how to trade itself, how to rem remove uh, the slippage cost or how to reduce the impact cost of going into the market. And it's a hugely successful because that's a great uh, use of using algorithms there. I wanted to talk about one use case on the customer service side of it, which we have seen a lot of value being delivered, which is around uh, aggregating all interactions for different customers. So whether the customer is on the website or on the mobile app, or they are chatting with somebody, uh, and they end up calling the call center, what we are able to figure out is what is the intent of that call before they call, which means that you have to aggregate all of these sources and figure out if they were on a, a beneficiary update page on the website, most probably they're going to call about that. And that means that you can directly connect him rather than going through the IVR menu, which obviously improves customer service. And it's a hugely successful, very possible use case. The last one I wanted to say on the operation side is a lot of work has been done very successfully on the compliance functions, which is a lot of legal documents have been automated in terms of extracting information, extracting rules, and putting it on the, on the trading systems now. Uh, there are some common capabilities which have been built in the industry and also internally in terms of uh, extracting information from documents, images, uh, doing sentiment analysis of the conversation which was happening earlier, whether it is the tweets or Reddit part of it. I'll give you a slightly different perspective from a value versus effort lens also where at least internally we have seen a lot of value. Most of the value which comes, uh, what we have seen with very little effort is around language processing. And this is an area where uh, tech companies have done a lot of work which can be used. And social media was a topic which Prem was talking about. So uh, at least in US, meme stock was a big thing last year. So this was a panel where what we started doing, uh, this was where we were able to ingest a lot of this data and actually process and start saying how to get out of it from a short squeeze type of scenario. So there's a lot of value from that perspective. Obviously, recommendations can get better. Conversation agent or chatbots is something which I feel still the best days are still to come. But voice processing, transcribing what customers are saying, extracting intent, sentiment is something where there is a lot of value. There are a couple of areas where there's a lot of effort, but there is a lot of value, which is around the new product launches. And this is an area where you can, again, look for a lot of customer chatter on the internet, competitor information, which can help you process what kind of product should be launched. One which I always suggest nobody to do it is around price prediction for the long term. I will quickly talk about, is this right for you, really? So the first question really is, why are you doing it? Uh, when we have these conversations internally, sometimes it's just marketing. Uh, it sells. If you say this is AI-based engine, it sells, and that's good enough objective to have. But then there could be ob objectives like scale, there could be efficiency, there could be uh, better predictive ability. And all of those are good uh, reasons to have it, but it's good to be clear why you are doing it. FOMO is a bad idea. If your competitor is doing it or you read it on the internet and you want to do it, don't fall for fear of missing out syndrome. But before you try even the AI ML part of it, just try the basic analytics. Just do exploratory statistical inferences to see something is there in the data. Because a lot of time, this all is based on data. And you will realize that data itself is not there, which was the third point. 99% of these algorithms are supervised learning, which is there is labeled data somewhere available. Now, if you don't have data, it's a non-starter. Don't try it. A lot of these internet companies didn't need explainability and auditability, but we need it. So if you need it, there is still not a lot of explainability about why certain recommendation came. I will skip the last one and possibly go there and just say that uh, 
important thing is to use the right tool for the right problem, which is don't use AI ML just because you heard it on a conference. My recommendation is pick it only for small repeated prediction problems where you can go wrong because even best of the algorithms will be 90% right, which means you will have those wrong uh, predictions coming out. Cloud and a as lot of software as a services are, have created a lot of value. So you really don't need a large team now to build it. Whether it is uh, AWS or uh, Microsoft or Google have made a lot of these services available, which should certainly be looked at. Most of the time, the difference will be on the availability of data. And the good part is, uh, if, uh, if you don't have the data, most of the algorithms are available. And I will wrap this up with saying, a uh, lot of these projects will take years to deliver value. So make sure your business case is long enough for value delivery. It's not a three-month type of project which can be done by a vendor. What we have seen is it takes two to three years. And that was all the time I had on the last slide. So thank you. <laughs>